we give our all to him. But before then, we are sinners outside Amen. of the Ark of the Covenant. We are outside of the Ark of Love, Amen. God, Amen. when we're out there. And so, like I said this morning, little Candle is born into this world. He don't even know he's in this world. Mm -hmm. 2.4 ounces, 2 pounds, 4 ounces. Wow. He don't even know he's here. But he is born into sin. Mm -hmm. He's born into sin. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, that's kind of, you know, when you look at that, you're like, well, that's just a little baby. They don't know nothing. They don't know right from wrong. They don't know what I'm saying. But, but that's the fallen depravity. That's the nature that we're born in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, uh, we, that's why we have a Savior. Mm -hmm. We have to get it right with him. And so, mm -hmm. so let's look at Job, because in Job, I, I have an answer for you this morning concerning <coughs> why you, uh, Job chapter 2, uh, verse 10. I, I have an answer this morning as to why you suffer. Um, and, and I just want to kind of uh, uh, just do a quick review of, of what I talked about on last week. Just do a quick overview, just to kind of line up with, with getting back to the to the end of it because um, I didn't get to go through all of it. I knew I wasn't going to get through all of it anyway. And, you know, Sister Tammy Gardner had just shared her story with us. And what a story. Amen. 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 I, I don't Amen. think it was a dry and he, I think when she was telling the story, I was hoping she could hold up through it when she could tell us enough where she wouldn't break down. But of course, uh, when you've been treated like that and you've got the violated, <laughs> she was everything, everything in her story. But that's just one story. All of us in here have a story. Yeah. All of us in here are going through something. Yeah, yeah, All of us yeah, yeah. have been through something. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's not to say that God won't allow uh, bad things to happen to good people because no. he do allow it. The reason why he allows it is because he has a purpose. He has a purpose. He has a purpose. Yes, sir. Whether the purpose is for us or whether the purpose is for somebody that's watching not us. Not all, not all. There's a purpose in our suffering. There's a purpose in why we are afflicted. David yes, said it well. I needed to be afflicted in so many words. I, I could paraphrase it like that. I, but he said these words. He said, I'm glad that I was afflicted so that I would know your statutes, so that I would learn your statutes. And what he was saying was so that I could draw closer to you, so I could draw nearer to you. You know, he said it was good for me to be afflicted. Now, how... You know, none of us in here would say, it's good for me to be going through this pain I'm going through, because I ain't going to tell you all that. Nah. I'm not going to tell you that it feels good, and I'm not going to tell you that it's good. Because I'm telling you right now, sometimes I'll be hurting so bad, I want to cry. I'm talking about cry. I'm talking about cry myself to sleep, so I can't feel the pain. That's how I be hurting sometimes. I was telling my wife last night, I said, hey, girl, I said, this pain just shot across my neck. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just it, it tightened the muscle up in, in this neck, mm -hmm. then it shot across my back. I said, oh, Lord. And she said, you ready to go? I said, yes, I am. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but now, it, bad things happen. You know, we've had tragedies in our family. You know, I've had my grandson murdered in, you know, right in front of his grandmama's house. and. And so you would think, like, well, you know, Pastor, you preaching the gospel, the good news and everything. Why would God let your grandson get murdered? You know, people have questions mm -hmm. about why bad things happen. Why would that happen? And you out here doing what you're doing. You're trying to reach young people. You're trying to get out here and turn them around and point them to the cross. Why would that happen? Well, I don't have an answer for that. All I can say is that God has allowed Lil Sage to be with us for 21 years, that's right. and that was our gift for 21 years. That's right. no. And that's how I look at that. That's so right. I celebrate 21 years that God allowed us to have him on earth. That's what I did. Yeah. And, so, and that's how I take it. And that's how it gets me through. Yeah. Because I don't know why he's no longer with us. Right. I don't know why. And so, and, and just to say that, I mean, because you know, uh, Job asked this question, and I'm going I'm, to I'm, I'm put it out here to y'all again, just so y'all can think about it, because you need to think about it, just in case you're going through something right now, and you feel like, well, Dad, Lord, I'm doing everything I possibly could right. right. Yes. You know, I come to church, yes. I pay my tithes and yes. offers, mm -hmm. I serve in the church, yes. 
I love my neighbor. Yeah. I try to help homeless people. I yeah. try to feed those folks that are hungry. I, yeah. I try to go visit those yeah. that are incarcerated. Yeah. I try to do my best towards my wife or my husband. Yeah. I try to do my best towards my children. Yeah. I try to treat my boss right on the job. So why am I going through all this hurt? Why am I hurting so bad? Why am I going through all this mental and mental anguish? Why am I hurting so bad? Why, why is all this stuff, why is the world coming down around me? Everything is coming at me. Why? And so Job asked that question. And again, he says these words to his wife. You know, because Job lost everything. And when I say everything, I mean he lost everything. He lost everything physical you could think of except for his mental capacity. Because mm -hmm. it, it scripture clearly tells us that he didn't blame God. Mm -hmm. it, it says he, he it says that he, he, he didn't blame God. It says that he didn't sin against God. Which means that he didn't say nothing against God concerning what was going on. But he did ask the question, why? Like all of us sitting here would ask why when something happens to us. But here he's talking to his wife and he's dialoguing with her. She'd already told him at this point. You know, she had told him somewhere in this text, you know, you didn't even ask God to kill you. You you should have you should have asked him to never let you be born. You you should have asked him not to even allow you to have a calendar day. That's what she said in so many words. I'm just I, you know, I like to stretch your imaginations when I talk about certain things. And so that's what she said, but he replied to her, watch this. He said, You're talking like a foolish woman. He called her a fool in some translations. It says you talk like a fool. No. It says right here in verse 10, Job chapter 2, it says you replied you were talking like a foolish woman. He said this, and this is the age-old question as to why we suffer. Shall we accept good from God? Watch this, and not trouble. In all this, Job did not sin in what he said. Job did not sin in what he said. He said, shall we accept the good from God, his blessings, the favor of the Lord, shall that be upon us? You get everything, everything is peachy cream, everything is a bed of roses, nothing should happen to you whatsoever, and you know, that wouldn't even be reality. You know, if there was a reality show about grief and sorrow and stuff like that, and that's why there's not a reality show about grief and sorrow and pain, because if it was, it would be unrealistic if you didn't go through something. I'll wait for the amen. Yeah, yeah, right. right. It would be unrealistic if you just your life was just peaches every day. Right. If, if just if every day was just a good day every day. Right. But you know what? Every day is a good day. Yeah. Bad things happen in the day. I wait for the amen. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch this. The word of God says in Psalms 118, it says, This is the day that the Lord has made. Now watch this. He says, rejoice, we shall rejoice in it and be glad in it. So what it is is that he wants you to still, you know, you you, you, you got to seek him out. And, and, and I would say this, you got to seek him out for that fruit of the spirit of joy. Even in the midst of your pain, even in the midst of your trouble, even in the midst of your sorrow, you got to seek him out. You got to ask him. Lord, replace this pain yeah. with some peace. Yeah. Uh, Lord, give me your joy. Yeah. That would yeah. be my strength. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's the only way you're going to make it. Lord. Other than that, you're going to yeah. grieve. You're going to go through. Yeah. He says, this is the day that the Lord has made. And so, yeah. you know, bad things happen in the day. But guess what? Y'all, the day is good. Yeah. I mean, for the yeah. events of that day. Yeah. You know why the day is good, yeah. Deacon? Yeah. Because the Lord is in the day. This is the day the Lord has made. The Lord is in the day. So the day is still good, even though bad things are happening in the day. I wait for the amen to die down. Bad things happen in the day all the time around me. But it's still good because the Lord is in the day. And if I think about him, Isaiah said, if you keep your mind, come on, I'm preaching to that. Stay on D. He will keep you in perfect, great God, perfect peace. Ain't no such thing as perfect peace 
on this planet outside of Christ. He is shalom. Come on, he's the prince of peace. I wish I had some prince people in here. He is the prince of peace. He is our peace. And when you think about heaven, when you call on his name, peace comes. Peace. Yes, it does. I've already been there and done that. Peace will come. And he'll tell the storm to be still. Won't he tell it to be still? He'll tell it to be still. I don't know what the storm is in here today, but he can speak to it. Did he speak to that category? Did this listen? He spoke the forest now. He spoke, he spoke to Michael too, but Michael still came in rough. Mike came in rough. Mike came in as a five. I believe he told it though, go ahead on in and it was five and just do what you got to do. But now Forrest was coming in at a five too, but he spoke to Florence and said, slow down, wait a minute, back it up. Yeah. You came on in as a one. Yeah. But guess what? Wilmington and all those places that are they still, they trying to recover right now. That's right. They still recover. Yes, so, but you know, you got a whole bunch of Christians down there, a yeah. whole bunch of Christians in Florida. Were they supposed to just get the good of the Lord? Nope. And I'm talking about some of them have lost everything. I'm talking about house, cars, yeah. money, clothes. I mean, everything. Anything you can think of. Schools. I've never seen a hurricane devastate and tear up a school and just run right through the school. That's right. That's right. I mean, tore it up. Just gutted. Gutted the school. That's how powerful that storm was. I'm talking about my roof off. I'm talking about went through the school, bust the bricks out of the building, ooh, just ooh. gutted it. Mm. That's powerful. That's powerful. And then, then on top of that, this is how powerful God is. Then on top of that, he was dropping tornadoes off in it. Oh, have mercy. They don't even have names for them. They just call them F1s and F2s and F3s. And that's because of the speed and the wind settlement. Powerful and oh. dropped them off in Richmond and Chesterfield and tore up stuff up there. That's after the storm had passed us. Dropped off, say, oh, by the way, if you thought you was out of it, I'm gonna drop a few tornadoes off. I'm just but God is still good now. You know, we come in here sometimes sitting and, and, and looking stone faced and look like we crazy and, and, and he spared us. Yes, yeah, yeah. struggle with that. Mm -hmm. But when bad things happen to good people, we are stunned. Our sense of justice and fairness are offended. We say, why, Lord? Why do you allow the wicked to prosper and the righteous to suffer? Mm -hmm. Psalm 73. You need to go there sometimes, though, because you will see that in the end, that particular psalmist that wrote that ASAP, he said, oh, boy, <laughs> when he took me into the sanctuary. You need to read that sometimes. Psalm 73. God changed his whole mind and his attitude because he showed him 
what the wicked was facing. Ah, he, he probably showed him the day of judgment. Ah, God Almighty, he showed him what he was going to do to the wicked ah, or what was going to happen to the wicked when they go to hell. Ah, the lake of pie and brimstone ah, when they were ah, destroyed. Ah, I don't know what he showed him, but anyway, his mind changed. Ah, his mind changed because he thought, like, like I just said a little earlier, Lord, I'm doing everything right. Why do wicked prosper? Y'all know how it is. Y'all know we, we, we do that stuff today. These drug dealers out here got all this money. They driving the nice cars. They got these nice places. They got all the fine clothes, jewelry, everything. They can do anything they want. They don't have no debt. I'm out here working hard. I'm working a job, slaving, breaking my fingers to the bone. Lord, why? Why the why you know they, they look like they getting over all the time. They, they look like they don't have no trouble. But stop by to tell you today, I used to be one. And you don't get no sleep. There's a whole lot of sleepless night. You're always watching over your shoulder. You don't never know when the popo coming at you. And you don't never know when somebody an, an, an adversary is coming at you on the street. You can't never trust nobody because it's that lifestyle, it's that kind of thing. And just because you got money, money ain't everything. You don't have peace. That's right, that's right, that's right. That's right. That's right. Stuff. Yes. But money Came back. has nothing to do with your soul. Nope. Nope. What will a man gain if he gains the whole world? And one time Luke. I thought I had the whole world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And loops his soul. Uh -oh. No money and everything, y'all. Don't be chasing the dollar. You know, I know some of y'all won't chase the dollar. Okay, it's all right to make money. It's all right to have money. It's all right to have lots of money. It's all right to have nice houses. Mm -hmm. Ain't nothing wrong with none of that stuff. Put it in the right perspective. That's right. Don't make it your God. That's right. yeah. Yeah. Don't make it your God because oh, as soon as you start worshiping and idolizing it, oh, no. God can take it away from you. Oh, that's what happens to most of those people that you see that's on the top one day, they're on top one day, and then the next day they're on the rock bottom. The book of Job teaches us a difficult truth about suffering. Sometimes we suffer because our afflictions accomplishes God's purposes. In Psalms 119, verse 71, David had it right when he said these words, it was good for me when I was afflicted that I may learn your statutes. This principle always seems to catch us off guard or by surprise, even though it should be obvious to us all. After all, the New Testament makes it abundantly clear that God allows the innocent to suffer in order to achieve his purpose is Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And y'all know that verse of scripture. And we know, Paul says, and we know, know all things work together for the good of those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. So a lot of times the reason why you suffer is because God has a purpose. This morning I read to you, Jeremiah 29, 11, he has a plan for you. Not that you would suffer and go... Not that you would, not that you would bring, not that he would bring any harm to you, but but that he would prosper you and give you hope and a future. But it didn't say anywhere in there about suffering. Not all. all right, I want y'all to get that, catch that. Go back over it again. Mm -hmm. Go back over it again. Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. I guarantee you won't see see nothing in there about not saying that you're not going to suffer. It's not in there. It's not in there. <laughs> he said he won't prosper you. Yeah. You want to make sure that you have a future and a hope, you know, but there's nothing in there about not suffering. The most innocent, watch this, the most innocent who ever lived was Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Mm -hmm. He suffered and died on the cross not because he was an evil doer, not because he, watch this, deserved to suffer, but because he was carrying out God's purpose, watch this, his will in the world. Jesus always did what was pleasing in the sight of the Father, yet his life was filled with suffering from beginning to end. He suffered rejection. He suffered false accusation. He suffered humiliation. He suffered violence. And then, Lastly, he suffered death by torture. Mm -hmm. None of us in here could even fathom a grip or, you know, even think about the suffering that he went through at Calvary.
But I'm just talking about throughout his young life, people was mocking him and people was ridiculing him. His own family members, brothers and sisters, was talking about him like he was a dog. They beat him and slapped him and they did all kind of mess. And this is the creator of the universe. This is the one that David said, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Then I know the works of your hands. I mean, because he is the creator on the scene. Teaching us to love and forgive and reconcile. And all he got was kicked in the behind every time he went somewhere. Not up. Somebody was kicking him around. I mean, I'm just, symbolically, they was kicking him around. I mean, if you talk about him like a dog, you kicking him around. If you spit in his face, and this is not a physical spit, but sometimes you spit in his face. Uh, by not paying attention, by not, not following the instructions, you spit in his face. If you did like Peter and you denied him three times, that ain't that ain't that ain't no better than spitting in his face. You deny him, I don't know what would you say. Then you get mad and want to cut somebody out. That's what that young girl did. She 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 got mad. I mean, well, Jesus, I mean uh, Peter rather, Peter got mad and wanted to cut her out. I don't know what you're talking about, I don't know. But you've been with him. She said, I seen you from the beginning. You've been with him. He was accused, he was tortured, he was, you know, just, I mean, we just went through the meal. He was, as the prophet Isaiah describes, he, 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 he was, he was smitten. He, 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 Isaiah describes him like this, says he was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering, Isaiah 53, verse 3. Why did Jesus suffer? Why did Job suffer? Why do you and I suffer? Because suffering in the life of a godly person is a way of allowing God to demonstrate that Satan is a liar and he's a cheat. And so, you know, see, Job had no idea that Satan was in the picture. Amen. But one of the reasons why you suffer, Deacon, is because God is saying, I'm going to put you on display and I'm going to show Satan and everybody else that rejects me, mm -hmm. that this is my son. That's right. How we put the amen to die now. He's going to be faithful right on to the end. Yes. Yes. He's going to be faithful. Job said it like this, Yea, though he slay me, yet will I trust yes. him. Mm -hmm. That's what he's bringing us to when we suffer. He's bringing us to a trust in him. Not only that, but Job worshipped him. The Lord give and the Lord take away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Yes. Yes. Now he had lost everything in that moment. Everything. Yes. Children, houses, cars, yes. money, yes. everything. Sick in his body. Yes. He was sick. White talking crazy. Yes. Sick. <laughs> Three friends are supposed to come and comfort them, comfort him. They say, well, it's probably because you sinned. <laughs> That's why God is doing this to you. And if God would not have told Job to pray for them three, they would have died because mm -hmm. God was going to take them out. Yes, sir. So they was falsely accusing him. Mm -hmm. They were falsely accusing mm -hmm. God. We suffer because God is allowing Satan to know, and he's allowing everybody that rose with Satan to know that he's a liar and a cheat. Satan claims that we human beings serve God only out of self-interest. When people continue to love and serve God, even in the depths of their suffering, they prove that Satan is a liar who richly deserves the eternal punishment that awaits him. Unfortunately, we Christians have all too often confirmed the lie of Satan instead of the truth of God. Arthur Ray Stedman has said in one of his writings, watch this, when we have suffered, we have ceased to serve God and have, watch this, misled, I mean, uh, misled, yeah, accusations, uh, accusations on him and dishonored him. So we have proved that our own faith is shallow and weak and a matter of self-interest, not unselfish service and love to God. Job teaches us that suffering is a means by which Satan is silenced and God is vindicated. It's a high and holy privilege to uphold the glory of God against the accusations of the devil. And if we will learn to see our sufferings in light of spiritual warfare, watch this, because I want y'all to get this. 
that has been raging since the beginning of the creation of the human race, it will transform our lives and our pain. Y'all got to understand something. I'm almost finished. Y'all got to understand something. You're in a warfare. Yeah. You're in a spiritual warfare. Yeah. When you came to Christ and you gave your life to Christ, you automatically got in a fight. Yeah. Well, this is good news. And the Canton Spirit to say, well, it's fixed. You got the victory because the fight is fixed. It's fixed. And the Lord will give you the victory. He's already given you the victory. You just have to come to the realization and the understanding that you have the victory. You're in a fight. You're in a fight. Every day. Satan is fighting against you every day. It is his job. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And guess what? He don't sleep on it. Nope. I wait for the eight minutes to die down. Y'all make you take a day off no. just because y'all have a good day. No. He don't take a day no. off. He's always plotting. Always. He's always scheming. Always. He's always manipulating. No. And listen, he'll wait for five years to get you. No. I wait for the eight minutes to die down. You ain't got to believe me. You're right. Keep having birthdays. He'll wait and he'll wait and he'll wait and he'll wait. Until right. you are so weak, yeah, you are right. so vulnerable yeah. 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 to come in and get you. Yeah. To come in and get you. Yeah. Uh -huh. He'll wait until you stop reading. He'll wait until you stop yeah. praying. Uh -huh. He'll wait until you stop yeah. meditating. Yeah. He'll, yeah. He'll wait until you stop yeah. trusting God. Yeah. He'll wait. Yeah. He'll wait. Yeah. Because he got a little time right now. He got a little time on the side right now yeah. to do his bidding. Yeah. And he got he got he got co-agents to do his bidding too. Yeah. Don't believe they ain't in the church. Yeah. I wouldn't believe there's a bad ass in the church. Yeah. In the church. Yeah. He, he got, he got some folks in the church that are doing his bidding. And, 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 and so and so so know that you're in a warfare ah. every day. Yeah. That's why you need to pray, Lord, dress me in the armor, even though you got it. Yeah. Oh, you got the whole arm. In conversion, you you, huh, you can dress up every day. Every day. Know that you got every it. Day, every day. But pray and ask him to dress. I ask him to dress me every day. Every day. And I know I got the honor. Ah. Ask him to fill me every day with the fruit of the spirit. Why? Because I don't want to do what I want to do. That's right. I don't want to do what I want to do. That's I want to do what he wants me to do. But you know, y'all, we know we Not we get caught up. We get caught up, yeah. and the flesh will tell us one thing. Yeah. And you can let it. You can let yourself get weak if you want to. Huh? Don't spend no time in the word. Don't wake up and thank him and give him praise. And don't wake up and pray to him as if you don't need him until you get in trouble. I uh, wait for the amen to die down. Ain't no need to pray to him then when you get in trouble, even though he'll get you out of the trouble. But you should have been praying to him when everything was good. Right. You should have been praying to him when everything right. was going all right. right. You should have been praying to him when everything was hunky dory. Right. Right. You should have been praying all the time. Oh, man. Don't wait till something bad happens. Oh, then you call him. Oh, 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 Lord. You don't call the pastor. You don't call your mama. You don't call your husband. You don't call your wife. Oh, Lord. That's it. Lord, have mercy on, on me. When you get into some trouble. <laughs> then as soon as he gets you out of the trouble, yeah, you this is how stupid we are. As soon as he gets out of the trouble, Lord, if you get me out of this. Yeah, right. I know I, I know I'm the only one that said this before. Lord, if you get me out of this, I'm talking about me now. Lord, if you spare me this time, right, right, right. you get me out of this yeah, one, right, right. I'll never do this right, again. Right, right. Three months down the road, I'm doing something else stupid. Right, right. But I got caught on the means. Y'all ever been in that place before? I've been in that place before. Where I was so drunk, so intoxicated, so high off of drugs, I drove up in my parking lot of where I live and was butt ball naked. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Didn't know who addressed me or touched me, Tony. In the car. Six, seven o'clock in the morning, people coming out to go to work and knocking on my window. Tony, I won't say then I won't answer. Tony, Tony, you know what's wrong with you? They thought something wrong. I'm, I'm, I don't even know. Uh, I was that drunk. I'm that. I said, Lord, if you, if you, if you take this from me, if you get me out of this one, I'll never do that again. <laughs> and guess what? I never yeah. did it again. But probably somewhere down the road, I did something else stupid. <laughs> I, That's right. 
I'm just saying, you know, that's funny. We can laugh at the day. We won't find it then. I'm sitting in my car, in my driveway. Buddy ball. That's right. Buddy ball. In my birthday suit. Wondering. Who took my clothes off? <laughs> Ain't nobody touched me because my doors were locked. Oh, wow. I was smart enough to lock wow. my car up. Man. I'm sitting in the car, man. flashing. They're coming out going to work. Hey, man, what's wrong? They're trying to wake me up, get me up. Hey, man, put on your clothes. What's wrong? <laughs> That's crazy, y'all. Wow. But how many of y'all know the devil gets you there? Oh, they listen. I'll be yeah. Yeah. Right yeah. there. Yeah. 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 He'll take you right there. Yeah. I said, maybe that's just me. That's maybe that's just me that's been through that kind of All stuff right. like that. Maybe that's me, y'all. I'm getting ready to close with this. Job teaches us that suffering is a means by which Satan is silenced by God and he is vindicated. And so we need to know that it will awaken us to the high and holy privilege of Paul's writings to the Philippian church in Philippians 3.10, sharing in the sufferings of our Lord Jesus Christ. He says, I want to know him in the power of his resurrection. He says, I want to know him in the fellowship of his suffering. And so why do you suffer? You suffer so that, number one, God is vindicated. Mm -hmm. It is a holy privilege to even serve God, to even know him personally. Amen. Number two, you suffer because God shows us that Satan is a lie and a cheat. Yeah. He shows us. Yeah. Number three, you suffer because he shows you in warfare. Yeah. You're in a warfare, y'all. Yeah. Every day. And don't get it twisted and think because you get up in the morning, start your day with him and pray to him, ain't nothing bad gonna happen. Don't, don't, don't trip like we want to think, we want to think that ain't nothing bad gonna happen. And so, and so usually we don't even think about it. We just, you know, we leave our house and we just go on about our business, whether it's the school, the work, or whatever. So, but I'm just saying this. Don't think ain't nothing gonna happen. Just because you cried out to him, thank him and praise him and you know, because that's where we get it wrong. We get, like, why did this happen? Lord, I prayed for you this morning when I got up. Lord, I read the word this morning before I left the house. So why do you let so and so happen to me today? Didn't I, didn't I, didn't I call on you this morning? Didn't I cry for you this morning before I left the house? Why did you let this happen to me? Don't even question him, because he has a purpose in it. He has a plan for your life. Plan to bring you no harm. That doesn't mean that you're not going to suffer. A plan to bring you a hope and a future. That doesn't mean you're not going to suffer. And so don't even question him. Just give him thanks. Learn to give him thanks. Learn to do what Job did. Job trusted me. Yea, don't he slay me. Y'all know what the word slay means in the Old Testament? It don't mean what y'all think it means when y'all see people on. TV is talking about slaying in the spirit. I wish you would tell me I'm a slave in the spirit. I ain't no 